civil society community in Nigeria have continued to express concern about the prevailing insecurity and seeming lack of value for human lives in the country. The recent is coming from Global Rights, one of the foremost non-governmental organizations in Nigeria that has continued to turn out yearly mass atrocities reports. Executive Director, Global Rights, Abiodun Bayowu, while briefing members of the press as part of activities to mark the 2022 National Day of Mourning said, between January and December 2021, more than 6,000 Nigerians lost their lives to mass atrocities, with over 5,000 recorded cases of abductions. She further expressed more concern, as the danger is even more pronounced during electioneering season. Now, the pool of atrocities did not remain stagnant in 2021. There were movements and patterns and regions of atrocities as well. So, for example, the focus of the actors in the insurgency in the northeast shifted somewhat. Boko Haram and Iswa became increasingly fixated on their battle for supremacy in the region. Abu Bakr Shika, Boko Haram's Eswa leader, who was reputed to have nine lives, detonated his last life while in combat with Iswa in Borneo State. Decimated and without strong leadership, battle-weary, Boko Haram's decimated members began to surrender to the Nigerian army or flee westward or to the lower parts of the country. Iswap's expansionist agenda also meant that they were spreading westward and downward as well. In Niger State, for example, there's a confirmed Iswap camp located in Babana National Park in Bogu. Niger, Kaduna, Zamfara, and Katsina are also suffering increased bandit terror attacks due to this migration. In spite of this trend, compared to 2020, there was a notable decrease in insurgent attacks in the Northeast, especially in Borneo and Yobe State. There were also shifts in the secessionist movements in the Southeast. After the indigenous people of Biafra's leader, Mr. Namdikanu's international abduction from Kenya by the Nigerian government in July of 2021, the crisis in the Southeast became more intense and more complicated. Across the Southeast, IPO began to enforce sit-at-home orders every Monday, and each time Mr. Kanu was to appear in court. The strategy was to force the Nigerian government to release him. The sit-at-home orders were brutally imposed, attacking businesses and individuals who dared to venture out of their homes during its enforcement, resulting in several fatalities. Other members of the group expressed their opinion about the increasing cases of insecurity and recommendations. You could recall that um, the Auditor General report clearly mentioned that 178,459 arms and ammunition were missing only from the police. This does not include army and other security agents. Now, if you cannot have security accountability, then the situation must con will definitely continue to get out of hand. Up to now, the police have not come to give explanation where those arms are. It is important for accountability's sake and to guarantee the safety of Nigerians' life that these arms that were allegedly um, missed, they should trace them. It's also critical to note that this army, this quasi public security actors of their arms and powers will be a Herculean task when their services are no longer required. Number nine, secure borders. Employ ungoverned spaces. Ungoverned spaces have provided physical harbor for several organized criminal groups across the country especially in the north. While porous land borders have ensured the ease of their importation. The group observed a one-minute silence in honor of those who lost their lives due to these mass atrocities within the period. Emmanuel Udu, News 24.